Hey everyone, I wanted to come and do a video response to Mocha Mommy 7 effectively using YouTube homeschooling um, channels and, or the community. And I just wanted to share and add some things that I've learned along the way since being a part of the YouTube homeschooling community. So I'm going to jump right into it. First of all, um, my channel is about homeschooling a special needs child but that has changed within the last year or so because of what's been going on towards him. So it's been geared more towards what I've been doing with my five-year-old son. So I have two boys. I have a 14-year-old who is special needs. He's developmentally de delayed. Um, he's in a wheelchair. He's too fed. He's nonverbal. And then we have the five-year-old who is, as they would say, typically developing. Um, so at this point of time, things have been geared more towards the five-year-old. Now, for my channel, there have been people that have come to my channel because I have a special needs son, and that's great, and I appreciate that. But I also know that there's going to be a point to where what I may do with my son may surpass what they need for their child that may be special needs because their child may be more high-functioning than my son. Then, hopefully, they could find other special needs homeschooling families on YouTube that have kids that are a little bit more high functioning than my son that they can glean from. But I'm glad that I was able to be um, an introduction to homeschooling a special needs child. Now, one thing I would say about the YouTube homeschooling community is that there's a lot of homeschooling channels on here. And to be honest, and again, when I'm speaking from certain, when I'm speaking about certain things, I'm only speaking from my perspective and what I do. And again, these are just suggestions for any of you new homeschooling families out there, because like Mocha Mommy said, there is a lot of new families that are coming into the YouTube homeschooling community. There has been a lot of families that have taken a break from doing videos, and I totally understand that. And so those of us that are still here, I think it's good that we try to give sound, practical advice and be transparent as well. So what I was saying is there's a lot of homeschooling channels on here. Now, I don't watch every homeschooling channel. First of all, I don't have enough time to watch every homeschooling channel that's out there. Secondly, um, I look to homeschooling channels that are similar to me and my style. So as far as the moms and just how they may do things, we may be similar in some regards. And so I kind of look at those channels and I glean from those. Um, so I would, I would also just say, you don't, just because you get on YouTube, that does not mean you have to watch every homeschooling channel because it'll just be too much. I mean, there's people that may not watch my channel, and I'm totally fine with that. You know, like I said, there, there comes a point in time where what I may do may not be enough for people that may watch me, and they need to move on to somebody else that can help them in another area of their homeschooling journey, and I'm totally fine with that. Um, I even do that myself. There's sometimes where I have to take a break from certain channels because they may be doing something totally different for their family, and the things that I need, I need to get help or just guidance, you know, from another channel. And that's totally fine. I mean, it's just about figuring out what works for you and for your family. Um, another thing I would say is when you are watching homeschooling videos on YouTube, do not get upset or nervous or anxious with the fact that you don't have a homeschooling room. And I know Mocha Mommy has mentioned this. I know that K at Shem Academy has mentioned this. Um, Mahogany Homemaker, when she was on, she used to mention this. And some other moms, some other great moms, they used to mention this too. And so I'm going to reiterate that. Do not get stressed out about not having a homeschooling room. As you can see, this is my living room. This is our homeschooling room. And as you can see, <laughs> there is no educational stuff on these walls. Why? Because this is our living room. 
we still relax in here. We still hang out in here. And at the end of the day, I don't want to, for us, I don't want to feel like I'm staring at a classroom all day. Now, we do have a nice basement downstairs. And that basement will be great for homeschooling. But because I have my oldest son who's in a wheelchair and I have my youngest son, and sometimes I'm doing things with them both at the same time, I can't take my youngest son, my oldest son, downstairs because of steps. And there's a lot of times where I'm here by myself just with the boys. And I'm not comfortable, nor do I feel it's fair to just leave my oldest son upstairs while I'm downstairs in the basement doing something with his brother. So we're still, we're, we homeschool upstairs. Now, behind me is Little's table where we have, um, where he'll do some activities and stuff. And then that closet right there has all our homeschooling stuff in it that we're going to be using as of right now. That back wall, I am thinking about putting some uh, Velcro across the back wall and maybe sticking some things on there while he's at the table. But that's it. Um, as far as posters and stuff, I don't do that in this living room. I do have a counting poster in Little's room. Um, he has a telling time poster in his room. And then our hallway is dedicated towards art. And then in my kitchen, I have a cork board where if the boys have done something, artwork or writing or whatever that they're proud of, we can post it on that um, cork board. But when I was getting on to YouTube, I saw so many families that had the homeschool rooms and it was doing the tours. And I, I have to be honest, I never felt jealous or envious because I knew for my family that would not work for us. And also, I didn't want to drive my husband crazy by saying, oh, babe, we need a homeschooling room. We got to turn the living room into a school. That wasn't going to fly. And so you also have to take into account how if you don't have room for a homeschooling room, you have to also take into account how that may make your husband feel or significant other feel if you start feeling envious and jealous of these other people that have a homeschooling room and they're and you're like, oh, I need a homeschooling room. And they're like, look, we still have to live in this space. So that's definitely something to talk to your partner about. But like I said, don't get stressed. Don't get jealous. Don't get envious. And I'm using those words because it happens. People get jealous. People get envious. People, oh, I wish. And, oh, your room is so nice. And I wish. Try not to use those words because then you're discrediting what you have. And you're discrediting what you can do. Like I said, I've watched plenty of videos where the rooms are decked out. And that's great for them. They can do it. But for us, I never looked at it and said, oh, man, I wish we had a homeschooling room and all of that stuff. I am happy with this living room space being our homeschooling room and how we use it. I'm totally fine with that. So um, it's, it's just very important not to get caught up into, into the wrong side. That's basically what I'm saying, the wrong side of comparison. There's a good side. Um to look at the other homeschooling channels and be like, okay, I can glean from that. Or, oh, we kind of have similar learn, uh, teaching styles and compare in the positive way. It's not a good and healthy thing to compare in the in the negative way. That's that's basically what I'm saying. So, um, so yeah, just to wrap it all up, um, if you come on YouTube and you're going to make videos, you know, just be honest, be transparent. People don't have to know all your business. And that's, I mean, I think when we say transparent, sometimes people take it like that. Like, oh my goodness, I have to let people know everything. No. But if you're going to be talking about your homeschooling and what you're doing, just be a little bit more transparent about that. Um, I have had a couple of people in real life ask me about homeschooling and that they're interested in homeschooling. And people have asked me, oh, is it easy? And I am quick to tell them, no. It's not. Um, and, and I'm not going to lie. Depending on where you're at, depending on your child, it's not 
easy all the time. Is it worth it? Yes. Is it work? Yes. Um, but to just say, oh, it's a piece of cake. No, it's not always a piece of cake. Um, and that's why I think it's important to have realistic goals. Um, another thing, um, Kay had mentioned this and also Mocha Mommy mentioned it too, is curriculum. People watch YouTube videos, the homeschooling community, and they see, oh, they got these awesome curriculums. Yeah, we don't have curriculums. So if you want to come to my channel <laughs> and watch a DIY mom, because that's what I am. I either get stuff off the internet or we're making stuff, or like I said, we have games. There's no curriculum. My my youngest is five. I'm not pulling out the. I'm not. I'm not doing <laughs> no curriculums at this point in time um, because I've kind of learned how he learns right now. That does not mean we don't have um, some workbooks. For example, since I got one right here, um, we got the Brain Quest. He has some writing. Um, I think that's good for him to be five and to have stuff like this because he does need to learn how to write on paper and to follow simple directions that's on paper. But the bulk of his education does not come from him sitting and just doing curriculum. So I would encourage you to not get stressed out about, oh, I have to have curriculum. Especially, again, if you're like five, like my youngest son, he's five. And if your child has special needs, like my oldest son, and they're on the low functioning end, like my oldest son, you don't have to stress about that either. I'm not going to go out and get a ninth grade curriculum for a 14 year old boy that is developmentally at the age of a preschool or kindergarten. I'm not going to do that. That's a waste of money. So, again, being practical and realizing homeschooling does not have to cost a lot. And I am proof of that. I have plenty of videos where I've hauled. Um, if you go to my video where I um, talk about what's in our homeschooling closet, all thrift store. Good quality stuff. I did not go to a convention. I did not. And again, I'm not knocking people that do that. I'm just saying if you're in a place where you don't know your learning style, your your child's learning style yet, or your teaching style yet, don't get caught up into buying all the stuff, is basically what I'm saying. So, um, I hope that this is encouragement to you new homeschooling moms, dads out there. Definitely make sure you're taking time for yourself. Don't allow homeschooling to rule your world. But you and your family, you guys dictate how you want it to go. Um, know your state's laws and regulations concerning homeschooling. We're in Ohio. Ohio is really lax. So, you know, that's really good. But some, some moms on here have mentioned that the states where they live in, they're a lot stricter. So, you know, make sure you know those things. And like Mocha Mommy say, don't take everything we say at face value. Do your research, you know, and especially with younger kids. Um, I was talking to another mom about this. The blessing about having younger kids is the room for grace. And what I mean for that is, is that's the time where you can mess around with different things. You can mess around with Montessori. You can mess around with, um, some people have mentioned Waldorf. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, you can mess around with. There's so many names out there, but you can just mess around with different learning techniques. That's basically what I'm saying and figure out what works. And like I've mentioned before, for us, we're eclectic. We have structure. We have I do. I'm trying to have him do some Montessori stuff where he's more doing individual life stuff. But, um, yeah, you know, I think at. That preschool to kindergarten age, that's a good age where you could just figure out huh, how I want to do things. And and also the biggest thing, too, is realizing that um, we're human. And just because you saw a YouTube channel, homeschooling channel, do something one way and then they change it, don't get upset about that. Um, 
things change in the homeschooling world. And that's the other thing that the moms were stressing too, is to be flexible. So if you saw one family doing something one way and you really liked that and then for whatever reason it wasn't working for them anymore or they wanted to take a break from that, you know, don't put all your stock in that and be like, oh man, I wish you guys would go back to doing that. Well, maybe for this season they need to veer off and do something different. Maybe you can find another family that has sound, practical, you know, your type of style that you're looking for and you can glean from them for a season. So um, I hope this video helps you. I hope it's encouraging. And like I said, welcome to all the new homeschooling families out there. If you have any questions, please comment below. Hello to all my new subscribers and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.